Wellington Menezes de Oliveira was born on July 13, 1987, and grew up in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. He attended the Tasso da Silveira Municipal School from 1999 to 2002. He was a strange, very reserved kid who was constantly bullied. He was called Sherman because he looked like the character Shermanator from the movie American Pie. He was also called Swing because of the way he would swing his leg due to a physical disability. Kids made fun of his clothes and shoved his head in a toilet. He was also thrown into a garbage bin and treated like trash. His mother had a mental illness and even tried to end her life by jumping in front of a bus while she was pregnant with him. Because his mother was unfit to take care of him, he was adopted by distant relatives who already adopted five children. He spent all of his free time online and had no friends. After he grew up and left school, he started working in a slaughterhouse but was fired for being lazy and incompetent. He also became obsessed with terrorist acts and Islam, which he described as the most correct religion. He was raised a Jehovah's Witness but converted to Islam when he was 21 years old. He attended a mosque in downtown Rio where he would study the Quran for hours daily. He said that he was friends with a man named Abdul, who bragged about being involved in the 9-11 attacks. Wellington wanted to move to a Muslim-majority country such as Egypt or Malaysia. On the morning of Thursday, April 7, 2011, also known as World Health Day, Oliveira entered the Tasso de Silveira school at around 8.30 a.m. He told the staff that he was there because he was asked to give a lecture, and they just let him in. He was armed with a 38 caliber revolver and a 32 caliber revolver with a number of speed loaders. He bought the 32 illegally and told the arms dealer that he needed the gun for protection. He bought the 38 speed loaders and ammunition from a former co-worker at the slaughterhouse. He walked to the second floor and entered an 8th grade classroom. He was initially very polite, greeting the children and putting his bag on the table. But then he shot several kids. He selectively shot to kill the girls while shooting boys only to immobilize them. Ten of the twelve children killed were girls. Two policemen who were patrolling the area were alerted to the shooting by two boys who had been wounded in the face. By the time the policemen arrived at the school, the gunman had already left the classroom and was walking to the third floor where students and teachers had barricaded themselves inside the remaining classrooms. Police shot the gunman in the leg and in the stomach, causing him to fall down a staircase. Oliveira realized that it was over, and with nothing left to lose, he shot himself in the head. Rescue workers used a football field near the school as a helicopter base from which to transport wounded children to the hospital. Hundreds of people gathered outside the school, either out of curiosity or to check on children who were inside at the time of the shooting. Police found a note written by Oliveira that said the following, First of all, you should know that the impure ones shall not touch me without gloves. Only the chaste ones, or those who lost their chastity after wedlock and were not involved in adultery, shall touch me without gloves. In other words, no fornicator or adulterer shall have direct contact with me, nor should anything that is impure touch my blood. No impure person shall have contact with a virgin without their permission. Those who prepare my burial shall remove all my garments, bathe me, dry me, and drape me completely undressed in a white sheet which is in this building, in a bag that I have left in the primary room of the first floor. After wrapping me in this sheet, they shall put me in my coffin. If possible, I want to be buried alongside the grave where my mother lies. My mother is called Dicea Menezes de Oliveira, and she is buried in Morundu Cemetery. I need a visit from a faithful follower of the Lord at my grave at least once. I need him to pray in front of my grave, asking for God's forgiveness for what I have done imploring that Jesus on his return wake me from the sleep of death for eternal life. I have left a house in Sethetiba, of which none of my family members need. There are poor institutions, financed by generous people who take care of abandoned animals. I want this space where I spent my last months to be donated to one of those institutions, because animals are very unappreciated beings and need much more protection and affection than human beings who have the advantage of being able to communicate, work to feed themselves. Therefore, those who take my house, I please ask to have good sense and fulfill my request. By fulfilling my request, you will fulfill the will of the parents who wish to pass this estate onto me, and everyone knows this. If you do not fulfill my request, 
automatically you will be disrespecting the will of my parents, which will prove that you have no consideration for them. I believe that you all have respect for our parents. Prove this by doing what I asked. In a video he had recorded two days prior to the shooting, Oliveira stated, I hope this serves as a lesson, especially to those school officials who stood by with their arms crossed as students were being attacked, humiliated, and ridiculed. I want to make it very clear that I am not responsible for the deaths that will occur, even though my finger will be on the trigger. Our fight is against cruel people, cowards, who take advantage of the kindness and the weakness of people unable to defend themselves. In his last wishes, he wished to be buried following Islamic traditions and asked Jesus for eternal life and God's forgiveness for what he had done. None of his relatives claimed Oliveira's body, so it was buried in a potter's field at the Kaju Cemetery two weeks after his death. The victims were between 12 and 14 years old. Eleven of the 12 students were buried the day after the shooting, following the Brazilian practice of burying or cremating people within a day of their death. The 12th child's body was cremated two days after the shooting. That's the end of the video. If you like the video, then like and subscribe. It only takes two seconds and it would really help me out. Feel free to check out the other videos on my channel.